Welcome to Course 2, Unit 5, Lesson 2, What is a Cash Flow Statement? In this lesson, you'll learn what a cash flow statement is, and you'll also learn how to use cash flow statements to identify strong companies versus risky companies. So let's get started. If you remember back to Course 1, Unit 1, uh, you'll remember a scenario where I was teaching uh, people about income statements and balance sheets with an ice cream stand uh, owned by a owner, Nancy. Um, one of the things that I had briefly mentioned was the existence of a cash flow statement, but I didn't get into any details on how the cash flow statement was used and what its purpose was. And so that's what this lesson is going to do, is we're going to go back to uh, the basic understanding of the income statement, the balance sheet, and now we're going to incorporate into that the cash flow statement. So uh, before 1987, a cash flow statement wasn't even required, but um, in order to provide more fidelity as to what's happening inside of a publicly traded company, a cash flow statement is now required. So just a quick recap, the income statement, which you'll find on the bottom left there, and what I'm going to use for this scenario is a basic candy store. We're going to say it's called Dan's Candy Store. And we're going to uh, just use some real generic uh, money to show how that money flows through uh, Dan's candy store. And we're going to show how what each one of these three statements do. Okay, so the very first one that you have to understand is the income statement. And you should be basically familiar with this. And the income statement demonstrates the amount of money being generated from the operating activities of the business. So this report will show you how much money is flowing into or out of the company based off of that product. So this would be the sale of Dan's candy. So let's say that um, Dan sells enough candy to generate enough income of $100. His net income would be $100. And so that $100 would be reported off of that income statement. At the top of the income statement is going to be the revenues and at the bottom is going to be the net income or the profit. Okay, so that $100 of profit flows into Dan's candy store. That's the profit that he made. And so that income statement would capture that. Now, once it's inside of Dan's store, before we were showing how that money could be paid to the owner through a dividend, or the money could then be listed as an asset on his balance sheet, or that money could be used to pay off debts, which would lower the liabilities on the balance sheet. So if you were just looking at the income statement or the balance sheet, which is how you would be viewing this before 1987, you would have to see the money flowing in off of the income statement and where that money was going would be whether the assets were becoming a higher value or the liabilities were decreasing. You would have to surmise how that money was being employed based off of how the balance sheet changed um, from month to month. So what the cash flow statement does is it, it shows you where that money's uh, being generated and where it's being spent and employed uh, throughout the company. So that's where the cash flow statement comes in and that's going to be its purpose. So let me give a, a, another example. Let's go back and let's say that $100 flows into Dan's candy store. Okay, And this is something that you might not have thought about before, but now as we're getting closer to the advanced lessons, uh, some of this will start making sense for you. But let's say that $100 comes into Dan's candy store through the, the sale of his product. Okay, Once that $100 reaches his corporate bank account, his, his company's bank account, there's a lot of things that he can do with that money. A lot more than what I've, uh, you know, the basic things that I've described earlier. So not only can he have money flowing in from the product that he has uh, produced, that the candy, the $100 from the candy, but Dan, let's just say that he has, that this is a publicly traded company. Dan could actually raise revenues for his company through the issuance of stock. So let's say that there's 100 shares outstanding on Dan's store. Let's say Dan wanted to issue another 100 shares, so there would be 200 shares outstanding. Well, when he sells those shares, that's going to bring additional revenues, a lot, additional funds and cash into his business. So instead of just making 100 from the candy that he, uh, that he sells, he might make another $100 uh, just through the sale of his stock. Another way Dan can raise money is he can issue bonds. Um, I'm sure you, you've already realized that, but um, that's not something that you're going to capture on the income statement. You're just going to see that he has more cash on hand or whatever the case would be off the balance sheet, and you wouldn't really understand how it got there. And the cash flow statement helps us identify that. So let's just say Dan issued $100 worth of bonds, so he collects $100 from some investor, in addition to the $100 he's already making from his product. So there's an additional $200 that are going to be going on to his balance sheet. 
Now here's another thing that a lot of people might not consider is let's say Dan has been using money in his account to purchase publicly traded companies just like you're doing inside of his corporate account. Now this would kind of make Dan's uh, candy store a holding company, but let's just assume that he owns some shares of a company inside of his corporate account, okay? And those, those companies that he owns inside of this Dan's candy store corporate account are making dividend payments to him. So that would be additional income that would not be listed on the income statement. That would only be captured off of the cash flow statement. So those are just a few of the different income streams that could be coming into Dan's candy store that aren't going to be listed on that income statement but need to be captured somehow. And that's where you're going to find the cash flow statement very useful in capturing those, those resources. Now, just as we described uh, funds that were coming into Dan's corporate account that weren't captured off the income statement, there's also funds that are flowing out of Dan's candy store that haven't been properly accounted for either. Let's go ahead and describe some of those. The first one that's pretty obvious is if Dan's paying a dividend to the owners of his company, um, which would be himself, if he's paying himself a dividend, that's not captured on the income statement. So that dividend payment has to be captured somewhere and that dividend payment is captured on the cash flow statement. You'll see the funds flow out of the company. Let's say Dan is using the money that, let's say that hundred dollars that, that flowed into his company, Let's say he's taking a portion of that hundred dollars, let's just say it's 25 of, that, of those dollars, and he's reinvesting that back into inventory, or he's using that $25 to upgrade his facilities or his equipment. Um, that's all gonna be captured on the investing portion of the cash flow statement. Another uh, thing that you're gonna find on the cash flow statement is that the money that he's using to pay off his debts or to make payments on his coupons for the bonds that he might have issued. When you were just working with an income statement and a balance sheet, you would see that maybe the liabilities would decrease, but you wouldn't know how much of his cash was being allocated towards paying off those debts. But with the cash flow statement, you can now see how, how much money he's using to pay off his debts and how much money he might be using to retire stock. Let's say before he was raising money by selling stock, let's say he's buying 100 shares back. Let's say there's 200 shares outstanding and he's using $100 in order to buy 100 shares back of his business because that increases the value of the shares that he's holding. So that would be the incentive for him to do something like that. So all of these things, all these nuances that I'm describing are all captured in this very important document called the cash flow statement. So when we open up a cash flow statement and we look at it, the cash flow statement's broken down into three categories. Okay, the, fir the first category is operating activities. Okay, and the operating activities are all of those funds that are flowing into the, into the business. So if uh, he was receiving dividend payments from companies that he owns inside of his corporation, that would be listed on the operating activities. If he, the net income is the first thing listed on the, on the operating activities, which comes straight off of the income statement. So all that money that's being generated for the, the business that he is doing, that he's producing, is listed there on the operating activities. Now, the, inve the next one is, the second one here is investing activities. So the money that he's using inside of his corporate account in order to buy more supplies, in order to upgrade his facilities, in order to buy new buildings, in order to purchase stock in other companies, in order to buy bonds. All those investing type activities are, are the second item that's listed on the cash flow statement. And then the third item that's listed on the cash flow statement is financing activities. So when I was talking about how maybe he was issuing more shares, that's a way of financing and, and raising money for his business. A lot of people might not view it that way, but that's exactly what's happening whenever a company issues more shares. Um, the other way that a company finances is that they issue bonds. So he could either take out a loan, he could issue bonds, and that will uh, raise money, and that's uh, the third category listed on the cash flow statement, and that's financing activities. Okay, so the important number to watch out of those three, out of those three categories on the cash flow statement is really that operating activity. Because this is, the, this is where you should see the green on the sheet. When you see a positive number under the operating activities, 
That's the true number that's providing the lifeblood of the company. If you see a positive number under investing activities, that actually means he, he sold some of his investments and that's the positive cash flow. And same goes for the financing activities. If you see a positive number on that third category in the financing activities, that actually means that he has sold bonds and he's incurred debt. So that's not a good thing. So when you look at the cash flow statement, you're going to want to see the operating activities as a positive number, hopefully a large positive number, and then the investing and the financing activities as the negative number because he's either buying investments or he's paying off debt. Okay, so that's important. The first one needs to be a positive and the second two need to be negatives. So let's just go through a, a generic example here and we're going to call this company A and this is going to be the cash flow statement for company A. And as you can see from the, from the right to the left, I have years 2010, 2011, and 2012. The first line is that operating activity, the next line is the investing activity, and then the third line is the financing activity. And you'll see that the fourth line is this just the change. If you summed up all three of those categories, the sum is at the bottom. Okay, so let's start with 2010 and work our way across the operating activities. So in 2010, you can see that company A generated $1,000 in operating activity. The next year was $1,100 and the third year was $1,200. So you see a nice steady growth and it's all positive number like what we wanted to see because this is the money... This is, this is what the business does. This is what's producing the income. So if it's a candy store, the candies are what are the primary thing that's generating that operational act, activities income. Now, as we move down to the next line and we look at the investing activities, you'll see that they're all negative. And like I said before, this is a good thing because this means that he's taking $500 in 2010. He's going to take $500 of the thousand that his company produced and he's taking that $500 and he's investing it. He's either investing it into a new candy product, a new building for his candy company, or maybe he's just going out and buying $500 of stock in another business. It could be any of those things. Or maybe he's buying bonds, $500 worth of bonds, and he's going to be collecting coupons from that investment. It could be any of those things. But what you want to see is you want to see a negative number because that means he's investing. Now, if you saw a positive number on that line, that would mean that he sold his stock or he sold his bonds or he sold half of his plant to some other company that is now producing candy. And now he doesn't have that capability to generate that cash flow for the next uh, period. So his, you would expect if the, if the investing activities were a positive number, depending on whether it was a good asset or a bad asset, you could maybe expect the operating activities to go down the following uh, quarter or the, fo the following year if those investing activities were positive number. So you can see in this scenario that his investing also increased. He's, he keeps investing a larger sum as he kept making more money under that operating activities. Now as we look at the third line, which is the financing activities, it's also a, a negative number. It's $400, $500, and then $600. This is also a good thing because this means company A is paying off its debt. In 2010, it paid off $400 of its debt and it had $100 remaining after that year. Then as we look at 2011, they paid off another $500 of debt. That's good. If this number was positive, that means the company would be taking on debt. Um, now they'd have more cash in their bank account to do whatever it is that they need to do. But in the long haul, that company is going to have to pay off that debt and you're going to see that being sucked out of the operational activities and you're not going to have that positive cash flow potentially in the future, depending on how they, how they use that capital that they borrowed. So this is what you're really looking for. This is a good example of a cash flow statement. You want that first operating activities to be positive and you want the investing activities and the financing activities to be in the negative and then your net change needs to generally be a constant and consistent theme across the board. The fact that the net change in cash is zero in 2012 really doesn't mean all that much to me because I don't, at that point, the, the company has a very positive operating activity. They're using that money to invest and they're paying off their debt. So for me, that all has a good sign. Now, if the company needed to, um, let's say they needed a lot of cash in order to conduct an acquisition of another business or something like that you would see the company start stockpiling their cash and you'd see that net change in cash 
be a positive number quarter after quarter as they prepare for that acquisition. And that's usually a good sign. If you see a company kind of stockpiling money, you probably know that they're getting ready to conduct an acquisition of another business. So in, uh, in company A, I was showing you a good uh, cash flow statement. Now in company B, I'm going to show you one that's not looking as good. So let's start from right to left and look at the operating activities. And you can see that the operating activity cash flow is slowly decreasing. It's going from 500 to 450 to 400. That's bad because this means that the, the income, the lifeblood of this company is slowly decreasing. And as you know, the equity growth of a business and those dividend payments, which we're using to value the company in the long haul, it has to be consistent and it has to be slowly growing in order for them to continue making those dividend payments and for them to continue growing their book value and their equity. So a company like this would have a hard time meeting that um, because their earnings and their overall operating activities are decreasing with time. So when we move down to the next line and we look at the investing activities, you can see that the investing activities are also uh, slowly decreasing. Now from 2011 to 2012, it went up $50, but generally speaking, it went from 600 to 300 to 350. And the reason that those investing activities are going down is because the operating activities are going down. They can't continue to invest at the same level that they were investing when they don't have the funds to do it. So let's get onto the third line and look at the financing activities. And you can see that these are positive numbers. So instead of the company paying off debt, it's actually incurring another $500 of debt. And for 2011, it's incurring another $300 of debt. 2012, it doesn't look good at all. They took out another $600 in debt. That's, that's them putting money in their bank account that they're borrowing from somewhere, somehow. Either they're, they're making that money from issuing more shares or they're issuing bonds or they're taking out loans, um, but that is not what you want to see. You want to see that first line positive and the next two lines negative. And you can see the net change in cash was zero in 2012, 450 and 400 in 2010. So the net change in cash was a lot higher here um, compared to company A, but in my opinion, this is a much worse looking uh, cash flow statement because of the trends and the direction that the, the money's flowing. So just a quick recap, here's company A, and you can see how I have the first line in green and the second two lines in red, and this is what we're looking for. We are looking for uh, that operating activity to really be generating that net change in cash flow. So I hope that this uh, lesson helped uh, give you a general idea of how a cash flow statement works. Um, this is really general and basic, but in the next uh, lesson, we're going to go ahead and pull up real companies and, and pull up their cash flow statements so you can kind of identify a good company versus a bad company with respect to how the cash is flowing through the business. So this concludes Course 2, Unit 5, Lesson 2, What is a Cash Flow Statement? And in this lesson, we learned what a cash flow statement is, and we also learned how to use a cash flow statement to identify strong companies versus risky companies. So I look forward to working with you guys in the next lesson where we actually apply the cash flow statement to real businesses.